a very good morning and welcome back to the course of micro engineering so in today's lecture we will revise the concept from our earlier lecture that uh, last time we solved one short derivation okay so last time we discussed a derivation of field expression and we call that derivation as a generalized derivation for expressing the field components in a three dimensional space so in the last time we have derived a derivation for general theory of waveguide analysis and whatever the field equations be derived that time are applicable for all the different types of waveguide geometries in today's lecture we will go one step ahead and we will see how these generalized field expressions are applied to a rectangular type of a waveguide right so i revised that last time we have one long derivation and in that derivation we have derived field expressions in the general form okay so there we utilized a three dimensional space which is characterized by three axes x y and z okay so along the z we consider the direction of propagation and along x and along y we considered those as a transverse direction and we completely expressed the transverse field components that is the component of fields along x and y axis with respect to longitudinal field component that is in terms of a z okay so the same theory we will apply please remember that whatever the four empirical equations we derived for the transverse component those are in the generalized form in today's lecture we will see a typical case of a waveguide especially the rectangular waveguide and we will apply those already existing equation so that they will describe the total field inside a rectangular waveguide so let us go ahead with that now first of all i would like to explain you what different types of modes propagations are possible when we make use of a waveguide <coughs> so here first of all i will start a discussion of modes of propagation modes of propagation now what do you mean by mode first of all a mode is defined as in general a specific field pattern of an electromagnetic wave right so in general in short or in a simple way what do you mean by a mode the definition of mode is the mode represent a specific field pattern of the electromagnetic wave so we will come to the details of what is the field pattern okay so when we see and when we derive the field expression components okay so already we have derived the field equations for a three dimensional space and that we call it as a general theory of a waveguide analysis okay so here let us see what different types of modes are supported when the electromagnetic wave is led to propagate through a given particular waveguide okay so the modes are generally classified into three types so the classification so here i will write classification of modes so how the modes are classified into the modes are basically three different types so the first type we call it as a tem mode tem mode second is te mode i will come to those definition and third is tm mode okay again we take the help of a three axis coordinate system in which we represent the wave propagation phenomena into a three dimensional space considering this 
rectangular coordinates in a three dimensional space represented by x axis y axis and z axis okay so let us consider that our electromagnetic wave is propagating along the z direction so this direction we call it as a propagation axis or we call it as a propagation direction okay and let us say the electric and magnetic fields are oriented along x axis and y axis so the electric field is oriented along x axis magnetic field represented by h vector represented along y axis so here we already know that the electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation if this is the particular case then this type of propagation of the wave we call it as a transverse electromagnetic propagation okay so tem stands for transverse electromagnetic right if we extend this particular definition to the other two remaining modes then te mode stands for transverse electric mode we'll come to this definition soon transverse electric and similarly tm stands for transverse magnetic right now whatever in the diagram on the right hand side which i represented this represents pure propagation of transverse electromagnetic wave in which the electric field and magnetic field are both perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation such that the electric field component and magnetic field component along the direction of propagation is zero so here what we observe is that in the case of pure transverse electromagnetic mode the electric field component along the z direction represented as ez okay so ez is zero and similarly hz is also zero provided if we consider the z direction as a direction of propagation so what is the definition of tem wave the tem wave is that wave in which electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation such that we will not get any electric field or magnetic field along the direction of propagation so this property is very important so ez and hz components out of those six components so here we can list the six component uh, as we have the three coordinate system we have three components of electric field as well as three components of magnetic field how they can be represented then we can represent them as ex ey and ez similarly hx hy and hz out of those six component two components are longitudinal components that is ez and hz okay and the remaining four component okay so the remaining four component ex ey this one and hx hy these are called as a transverse component okay so we note that in tem wave of propagation ez and hz longitudinal field components are absolutely zero okay so we extend this definition to the other two remaining modes so what is a te mode then te mode stands for transverse electric so transverse electric means electric field is zero along the direction of propagation electric field is zero along the direction of propagation but please remember the magnetic field along the direction propagation is non zero okay so this is a important sum so the transverse electric wave is such that electric field component is absent along the direction of propagation while the magnetic field may not be absent okay so if we extend the same definition to the last remaining mode so here we can write in a reverse way here electric field in transverse magnetic mode is non zero while the magnetic field component along the direction of propagation is absolutely zero okay so you please remember here i will highlight the definition of te wave tm wave and pure tem wave 
so what we can understand from this definition in pure tem wave the component of electric field and magnetic field along the direction of propagation both are zero in the case of transverse electric wave electric field component is zero along the direction of propagation while magnetic field component is a non zero and similarly in transverse magnetic mode tm mode the electric field component along the direction of propagation we always consider the direction of propagation as a z okay it is going to be a non zero while the magnetic field component is going to be zero now we already know that there are total six field components are available out of these six field component four components are transverse so these one over here ex ey and hx hy are known as transverse component while ez and hz is called as a longitudinal component right so with the definition of tem wave te wave and tm wave what we understood then out of six components ez and hz are zero so in the case of transverse electromagnetic wave the remaining components are ex ey hx and hy so these component we are going to get and the remaining two components are already zero that is ez and hz both are equal to zero similarly if we consider the te mode in te mode we get ex we get ey we will not get ez because ez is zero while we get hx hy and hz because hz is non zero and similarly in the case of transverse magnetic mode we will get ex ey okay ez also we will get because ez is non zero then we will get hx and hy and we will not get hz because it is zero so here if you totally count the total number of possible fields available in these different modes in transverse electromagnetic mode there are total four different field components are available similarly in the case of transverse electric mode there are total five field components are available okay and similarly in transverse magnetic mode again there are five field components are available out of six okay so here ez and hz zero and here we will get a four component and all these four component in the case of transverse electromagnetic mode are called as a transverse component all are transverse component right now in the case of transverse electric mode what we observe we observe that we have ex ey hx and hy these four are a transverse component so here we get four transverse component right plus one longitudinal component that is a hz plus one longitudinal component right and similarly when we take the case of a transverse magnetic mode again we get four and these components are ex ey ez and uh, sorry ex ey and hx hy and plus one longitudinal component we will get that is ez right so this is what the field availability for the different types of mode propagation now you understood what is the definition of modes and how the modes are classified and the definition of these modes so in general there are three different modes tem te and tm okay now here one step ahead i will tell you the speciality of these three different modes okay so as a rule of a thumb over here i will write that rule of a thumb so rule of thumb that you need to remember is if the waveguide consists of two conductors then it supports 
TEM propagation. Please remember. So this is a very important aspect of a waveguide. So I will highlight this one as a rule of thumb. What is the rule of thumb? If the waveguide consists of or if the waveguide is constructed using two separate conductors, then at that time remember that it will support or it will conduct the electromagnetic signal or the micro signal in its TEM wave of propagation. Okay. On the other hand, if the waveguide doesn't consist of two conductor system, then please remember it will not support pure TEM wave of propagation. So it will support the other two modes that is TM wave and TE wave. So our next discussion will be based on the same principle of this rule of a thumb. Okay. So in our next discussion, what we see is why the waveguides which are made up of a single conductor cannot support TEM type of a propagation. Okay. As a rule of thumb, we already explained that if the waveguide consists of two conductor system, then only the wave guide can support propagation of a TEM mode. Otherwise, it will not support the propagation of a TEM mode and the modes of propagation in the waveguide will be TE and TM mode. Okay. So next discussion, let us discuss the case of any particular waveguide. So in our syllabus, we have the two separate waveguides, rectangular waveguide and circular waveguide. Okay. And both of these waveguides are not going to support TEM wave of propagation. Why it is so? Let us discuss now. Okay. Now let us say this is uh, a cross section of a rectangular waveguide. Right. So this is say a rectangular waveguide. So the roughly I am drawing it. So this is a continuation line. Let us consider this is the direction of propagation. This horizontal width of the rectangular waveguide is denoted by a and let us say it is located along x axis and similarly the height of this waveguide is let us say oriented along y axis okay so height of this waveguide is small b okay the dimensions of this rectangular waveguides are such that the width a is a width right is greater than b that is the height of the waveguide okay now this rectangular cross section whatever i have shown over here that i will highlight this rectangular cross section i will take on this particular side in order to illustrate why this waveguide is not going to support the pure tem wave of a propagation so if you look into this particular waveguide you will get rectangular cross section now this cross section has the width which is given by A and this cross section has a certain specific height which is denoted by B and the relation is the width is greater than height. Okay. So this is a particular cross section of a rectangular waveguide. Okay. So for time being you consider that a transverse electromagnetic wave is propagating in this particular waveguide along the z direction so the z direction again here we consider is a direction of propagation direction of propagation so let us say that a transverse electromagnetic wave is propagating in the given rectangular waveguide along the z axis okay so by the definition of transverse electromagnetic wave the z direction over here in this way is the propagating axis right through which the wave is propagating okay so the electric field and magnetic field they will orient along themselves making perpendicular case okay so that means if we consider that this rectangular waveguide is carrying the transverse electromagnetic wave and propagating along the z direction in this way then the electric field and magnetic field as per the definition of tm wave they should be perpendicular to each other and they also should be perpendicular to the direction of propagation okay so that means let us say along x along x there is a magnetic field okay along x let us say there is a magnetic field and along y that is 
along the height let us say there is an electric field okay so we know the property of magnetic field so this magnetic field which is there along the x axis as i have shown over here the magnetic field is along x axis the electric field is along y axis and these two fields are perpendicular to each other right and these two fields are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation right so that means this is a pure tem wave of propagation okay now see that with the theory of magnetic field as magnetic field is located along the x axis now as per the theory understanding please remember that magnetic field will form always a closed loop okay so when the magnetic field generates closed loop this closed loop will be formed in the xy plane okay so this is the xy plane right so whenever the magnetic field is present along the x axis it will always form a closed loop okay so this closed loop when we show let us say i will choose this uh, dark green color so magnetic field will be like this then magnetic field will always in the form of a closed loop please remember okay so what this indicate this green dotted line which i highlighted over here this indicate that this is a magnetic field h okay so when it forms a closed loop of a magnetic field then as per maxwell's equation okay so what will happen so when a magnetic field will form a closed loop okay so it should generate a current okay at the center okay so when it forms a closed loop in this direction it should enclose a current okay so if it should include a current so we know that the right hand rule whenever the magnetic field lines are closed they will enclose an electric field okay so this electric field has to be present at the center here okay so whenever the loop of magnetic field becomes closed it should encompass or it should generate a central electric field okay but please remember this is a rectangular wave guide and inside this wave guide there is no any other conductor okay so that's why here there is no any conductor so if there is a no conductor the central electric current will not get supported okay so please remember over here this is a hollow rectangular wave guide and the electric field is around located along the y axis the magnetic field is oriented along the x axis by the theory of electric field and magnetic field we know that magnetic field whenever it is present it will form a closed loop right and it will enclose a current okay so if it encloses a current it should get located at the center of that loop and this loop is formed in the xy plane and we know that at the center of this particular wave guide there is a no conductor as there is a no conductor the current will not be supported at the center okay so as the current is not supported at the center the loop doesn't exist right so that means what if we consider that the tem wave is propagating actually the hypothesis of making that the tem wave is present in the wave guide was actually wrong then okay so we know that there is a no conductor located at the center because of which the current conduction through the center will not take place as there is a no supported current at the center the magnetic field will not exist okay so as the magnetic field is not going to exist so please remember the magnetic field may get located along the z direction and it violates the definition of tem wave then okay so initially what we considered initially we considered that a tem wave is propagating okay so if the tem wave is propagating the electric field and magnetic field that is ez and hz components are totally zero along the direction of propagation both right but if we assume that particular condition it sees that 
the magnetic field will form a closed loop in the xy plane and it necessitates that it should enclose a current carrying conductor at the center which is not the actual case okay if there is no current carrying conductor at the center the magnetic field will not get formed in the xy plane okay but we know that the waveguides are conducting that means the conduction is taking place not because of electric field but because of displacement field okay and this displacement is available along the z direction that means along the z direction there could be possibility of presence of either electric field or magnetic field and both and if this is the particular case then our assumption of getting the tem wave of propagation not valid okay so i hope you understood why the tem wave of propagation is not supported in a particular waveguide and the reason we explain here okay so please remember waveguides now typically this particular rectangular waveguide consists of a single conductor okay if you recall that rule of thumb which we have said just a few minutes before if the waveguide consists of a two conductor then it supports tem propagation but here we know that the waveguide is only a rectangular waveguide and it is only consists of a single conductor and that's why it will not support tem wave of propagation but it will support te and tm mode that is transverse electric mode and transverse magnetic mode okay so i hope with this particular discussion the thing is very clear to you that why the waveguides are not going to support tem wave of a propagation okay so we have demonstrated you with the taking the example of a rectangular waveguide okay why and how the tem wave will not get propagated but on the other hand all the waveguides they can support te or tm or both types of a propagation but not the tem propagation okay so as a rule of thumb we just remember that whenever there is a two wire conductor system especially consist of two separate conductors then that particular transmission line or medium can support tem wave of propagation okay so we go ahead and let us now see the what different types of modes are possible in a particular rectangular waveguide okay so here we know that any particular waveguide is not going to support tem propagation so either it will support te wave or tm wave or both but not tem okay so we will focus now our discussion to rectangular waveguide okay so we will be starting with a rectangular waveguide in detail again the initial part we will devote for deriving the expression for the possible field components which are available in the rectangular waveguide so here the objective now i will specify what is the objective the objective is i will write here the objective is to find all different field components supported by rectangular waveguide okay so this is a simple objective of studying the rectangular waveguide so here my objective is to find out all the possible field components which can be supported by a rectangular waveguide as we already discussed that and it is very clear that rectangular waveguide is a single conductor and thus it will not support tem propagation so only the thing left with a rectangular waveguide is then it may support tm wave and te wave now we will have a derivation once again and this derivation will be based on again the general theory of a waveguide analysis 
whatever four empirical equations of a transverse component we have found in our earlier derivation the same components of field we are going to utilize over here but especially we are going to see a particular rectangular waveguide okay so i will draw a rectangular waveguide again over here so let us say this is a rectangular waveguide having a cross section the width of this rectangular waveguide is denoted as a okay now let us say this width is located along the x axis right and the height of this rectangular waveguide is denoted by small b the relationship is such that the width of a rectangular waveguide is greater than the height of the rectangular waveguide now this rectangular waveguide is extended up to infinite length along the z direction in this way this is a continuation okay so this is the z axis right now here the width and height are shown over here the height is shown along the y axis width is shown along the x axis and the propagation let us say we consider along z axis so here how the transverse field components are given transverse field component if we assume here that the wave is propagating along the z direction now here i will write propagation direction the propagation is taking place along the z axis okay so the transverse field components are then so here i will write the transverse component transverse component means components which are perpendicular to the direction of propagation so the transverse components are ex ey and hx hy these are the four transverse components and what are the longitudinal components longitudinal components are the components along the direction of propagation and there are two so that longitudinal components are ez and hz respectively okay so what is our aim over here is to find these transverse components and these longitudinal components for different modes okay we already discussed that the rectangular waveguide or any particular waveguide which consists of a single conductor system will not support tem propagation it will support te and tm mode of a propagation so we will start with transverse magnetic mode of a rectangular waveguide okay so here we define tm mode analysis tm mode analysis of rectangular waveguide okay so i hope you understood why we are going for this particular mode of analysis because we know that the rectangular waveguide will not support tem mode it will support tm and te mode and in the next derivation we are going to see how the field equations are derived for the tm mode okay so for the tm mode transverse magnetic mode we know that hz is zero and ez is non zero okay so if you come over here in this way here in the tm mode we already discussed in tm mode ez is non zero while hz is zero so the same we specify again over here hz transverse magnetic mode hz is zero while ez is non zero okay this has to be considered so we will write a wave equation in the longitudinal field components so the wave equation is written as i will write here wave equation in terms of longitudinal component in terms of longitudinal components it is given as i will write the wave equation del square of ez hz in general i am writing ez hz plus omega square mu epsilon ez comma hz 
is equal to zero okay so this is what this is a general equation of the field component along the longitudinal direction okay so this equation can be written as if we replace the del square term by its space derivative okay so we already know del is a operator space operator and this particular equation can be written in terms of space derivative as i will write over here now here below so del square i can write as a daba square upon daba x square okay of ez right plus daba square upon daba y square of ez right plus daba square divided by daba z square of ez plus omega square mu epsilon ez is equal to 0 let us call this an equation number 1 now you may have one question over here that though this particular equation contains a z component why it is not considered the a z component in equation number 1 now please remember that we are analyzing a rectangular waveguide in its tm mode now for tm mode what we have considered that z is 0 while ez is not 0 so you should remember that in this particular wave equation which is represented in terms of longitudinal component we need to consider z is equal to 0 so that's why this equation will be only present in terms of a ez component right so this equation one can be solved using variable separation method so above equation i will write over here now i hope that uh, you people are also deriving the tm mode field equation along with me so i request you people to have a practice of deriving the things by observing this particular video okay so that you will come to know the details of derivation okay so above equation okay above equation is solved so how you can solve this partial derivative equation so we know one technique by using variable separation method by variable separation method by variable separation method so what is that variable separation method okay so we can represent ez as in terms of x y z how it is represented in variable separation form x of x capital x of x capital y of y and capital z of z okay now here consider this as an equation number two now please note over here that we have omitted the propagation parameter okay e raised to j omega t it is rep represented as a e raised to j omega t propagation parameter along z for simplifying the expression so in the derivation what we will do is we will neglect this propagation parameter for simplifying the equation okay so what we do is we substitute equation 2 substitute equation 2 in equation 1 substitute equation 2 in equation 1 so what you will get so when we substitute equation 2 in equation 1 i will get capital y z and the partial derivative will get converted into full derivative d2 x upon dx square plus x z capital d2 y upon dy square plus x y d2 z upon dz square right plus omega square mu epsilon capital x y z is equal to zero okay so what we will get so when you substitute equation number two into equation number one and when you simplify it further what we will get we will get the partial derivative equation in equation one that get converted into full derivative term 
ठीक है सो वट वी डू इज वी डिवाइड इक्वेशन थ्री नाउ आई विल राइट हियर डिवाइड इक्वेशन थ्री ऑन बोथ साइड by x y z okay so if you divide both side of equation number 3 by x y z what you will get you will get 1 upon x right d 2 x upon d x square right similarly you will get 1 upon y d 2 y upon d y square similarly you will get 1 upon z d 2 z upon dz square okay and here plus you will get omega square mu epsilon when you divide by xyz xyz term becomes cancel this is equal to 0 now let us consider this as an equation number 4 okay now we will assume that let the term 1 upon x d2x on dx square let us consider this as a term minus a square let us consider this as a term minus a square similarly 1 upon y d2y upon dy square let us consider this term as a minus b square for time being okay and similarly the third term indicating the propagation 1 upon z d2 z upon d z square let us consider this as a minus beta square okay consider this all substitution as a equation number 5 okay where a b and beta represents some real constant so here what this represents so this represent that a b and beta are real constants they are real constants right okay so what you can write from equation number 5 so from equation number 5 the first representation i can write in this way so i can write d2x upon dx square right plus a square x is equal to 0 let us call this an equation number 6 similarly if you consider the second term how i can write i can write it as a d2y upon dy square plus b square y is equal to 0 consider this an equation number 7 and finally when we apply the same technique for the third term what i will get the equation as d2z upon dz square plus beta square capital z is equal to 0 call this an equation number 8 okay so we know that equation number 6 equation number 7 and equation number 8 these are full derivative terms okay so from the mathematics we know that the derivative full derivative of a second order it can be given with a solution okay so the solution for equation 6 7 and 8 so the solution for above equations okay so from the mathematics we know that if the equation represents a second order derivative full derivative then the solution can be represented in terms of trigonometric relation okay so first of all equation number 6 and equation number 7 these are indicating x axis and y axis so the solution are given as okay so the solution for the first equation so the solution we need to find for capital x from the equation number 6 how it is represented in general it is represented as c1 cos ax plus c2 sin ax okay and this represents standing wave along the x axis this represents standing wave along the x axis call this as an equation number 9 similarly the solution for equation number 7 is given as capital y is equal to some other constant c3 
cos by plus c4 sin by in general the solutions are represented by this so this again represent a stranding wave which is along a y axis right let us call this an equation number 10 and if you consider solution to equation number 8 now the equation number 8 is the propagation so is indicated as solution for z is given as in terms of propagation constant in terms of exponent e raised to minus j beta z okay plus other constant c6 e raised to j beta z okay and this represents traveling wave rather than standing wave along the z direction okay so the solutions for the above equations are represented by equation number 9 10 and 11 so these are generalized solutions generalized solutions for the above equations in order to calculate capital x capital y and capital z okay so the constant over here that is c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 and c6 so here i will write c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 and c6 all these are representing constants what they represents they represent constant and they can be evaluated they can be evaluated so how we can evaluate these constant by applying boundary condition by applying boundary condition if you recall from the first chapter we have seen a little bit information about the boundary condition that time we revised the concept of boundary condition now please remember that time we said that we are going to make use of boundary condition in the second module so here we now approached this particular boundary condition okay so what we assume that assuming that wave guide rectangular wave guide is infinitely long is infinitely long along z direction and that is also positive z direction plus z direction we assume that the rectangular wave guide over here whatever we have shown in the diagram here okay so this direction is infinitely long along the z direction so in that particular case if we assume that the wave guide is infinitely long along the positive z direction then there is a no question of a wave traveling in the opposite direction okay so that's why the constant c6 we can set to zero hence we can set c6 constant directly to zero because if we consider that the wave is propagating along the positive direction of the z axis only e raised to minus j beta z terms remains okay so e raised to j beta z terms becomes zero and that's why c6 can be directly written as a zero so we can assume directly that c6 is zero okay so what we do is we substitute now we substitute equation 9 equation 10 equation 11 into equation into equation 2 with c6 is equal to 0 with c6 is equal to 0 so what we do is we will substitute equation 9 10 and 11 which are representing solution okay into equation number 2 okay so the equation number 2 is a generalized solution okay and we will set c6 is equal to 0 so what we can represent then ez is equal to now you see where is the equation number 2 equation number 2 is over here right so i will highlight that the equation number represented over here now here we will substitute those solution considering c6 is equal to 0 so how, how we can write then so ez is equal to what is the first solution is x solution 
so how the x is given the x is given over here from equation number nine right so i will write this first as x component into bracket c1 cos ax right plus c2 sin ax so this is the x component right so multiplied by y component see here next is a y component so the y component is given by this particular equation okay so substitute it so when i substitute i can write into another bracket c3 cos by plus c4 sin by okay and then the z term now please remember the z term we will replace with equation number 11 over here and again in that c6 is already zero therefore only c5 term will come and then i will write this as c5 into e raised to minus j beta z okay now call this equation as a equation number 12 right so here we have achieved the equation for the longitudinal field component that is the ez on the right hand side if we observe we have given the representation in terms of x and y component okay now what we do is we will apply the boundary condition okay so what is the boundary condition let us see now let us apply the boundary condition okay so i will explain a simple boundary condition for a waveguide now the waveguide has the width and the height okay so the width is oriented along the x direction and this width we are calling it as a a small a and similarly the waveguide has a certain height this height is represented along y and the value of this height is represented by small letter b and along x it is infinite okay so here a is greater than b where a is a width and b is the height so what is the boundary condition over here we are going to apply the boundary condition along x and y direction we are not going to apply any boundary condition along the z because the z direction we have already considered to be infinite in the direction okay so applying boundary condition so here i will write boundary condition is applied boundary condition is applied to x and y direction okay so we have width along x and we have height along y direction okay so the boundary condition so the boundary condition so at x is equal to 0 to x is equal to a okay so this is a boundary so the beginning value of x is equal to 0 and the waveguide is present up to x value is equal to a and similarly y is equal to 0 to y is equal to b so these are the two boundaries limiting to the ez component and we know that tangential component of the electric field is zero at the conducting boundary that means ez is zero ez is zero at this boundary okay so we have found a boundary condition for the rectangular waveguide when we are analyzing it in a tm mode that the boundary condition is specified by x start from 0 over here and x will become a over here okay so which defines the width of the rectangular waveguide and similarly the y is going to be 0 over here so the y over here is a 0 and the y over here is going to become b and this will specify the second boundary condition so on these two boundaries at the interface the tangential component of the electric field is 0 that means ez is 0 at these boundaries okay so here i will write that ez is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to a 
and similarly ez is going to be zero at two boundary condition at y is equal to zero and at y is equal to small b okay so these are the boundary condition now what we are going to do is we are going to apply these boundary condition in order to further simplify the field equations okay so one by one we will apply these boundary condition and then we will simplify equation number 12 so in equation number 12 we will apply these boundary condition and then we will evaluate these constant and we will simplify the expression for each set okay so let us say first i will write over here at x is equal to 0 we know that ez is equal to 0 right so i will write the equation number 12 by substituting x is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 the tangential component of the electric field that is ez is equal to 0 therefore from equation 12 substitute we write so how we can write equation 12 then so equation 12 we substitute ez is equal to 0 and x is equal to 0 so what i will get i will get ez at x is equal to 0 okay so when you substitute x is equal to 0 on the right hand side we will get directly c phi i will write into bracket c1 cos ax directly i will write you can substitute x is equal to 0 in equation number 12 on the right hand side and you will receive or you will get these terms only okay so into another bracket i will get c3 cos by plus c4 sin by e raised to minus j beta z okay and this is going to be zero because on the right hand side we have e z and that is going to be zero okay so what this equation gives then this gives c5 e raised to minus j beta z into c1 cos ax into another bracket c3 cos by plus c4 sin by right is equal to 0 now we know that on the right hand side this equation has 0 so that means on the left hand side we have three constant terms okay so these constant terms i will encircle c5 c1 c3 and c4 out of these four constant one constant has to be zero so that the entire on the right hand side we will get a result is equal to zero now we need to see that which constant term has to be zero so that the result on the right hand side becomes zero okay so if we consider c5 has to be zero over here this particular term this cannot be zero this cannot be zero why because this represent propagation component and along the z direction there is a propagation of the wave so we cannot consider the constant c5 is equal to zero okay then can we consider this particular bracket in which c4 and c3 constant are zero so if i substitute c3 is equal to zero if i substitute c3 is equal to zero what will happen i will get c1 c5 and c4 okay so this is not possible so if i consider to substitute c4 is equal to zero on the left hand side i left with c5 c1 and c3 okay and on the right hand side again it remains zero so i need to find which constant out of these four so c5 is not going to be zero c3 is not going to be zero and c4 also we cannot put is equal to zero then the only thing that when we substitute on the left hand side equal to zero will bring the total result on the right hand side is equal to zero so here if we concentrate on c1 okay so c1 if i put is equal to zero what will happen c1 multiplied by cos x zero multiplied by cos x zero this product on the left hand side multiplied it will give zero and the entire result will get equated to zero so only the condition that 
this indicate that c1 has to be 0 okay so we find that c1 has to be 0 okay so what we do is we will substitute c1 is equal to 0 now here i will write therefore substituting what c1 is equal to 0 substituting c1 is equal to 0 in equation 12 in equation 12 please remember so equation 12 what we substitute in equation 12 we will substitute c1 is equal to 0 and we will rewrite the equation okay and we will rewrite the equation so what we will write ez is equal to okay ez is equal to c1 is 0 right so i can write c2 sin ax c2 sin ax right c3 cos by c3 cos by plus c4 sin by right multiplied by c5 e raised to minus beta z c5 e raised to minus j beta z is equal to 0 okay so sorry c5 e raised to minus beta z okay so what we do is we now apply the boundary condition okay now here i will write again now we apply boundary condition again we apply a boundary condition so which boundary condition we will apply so let us apply y is equal to 0 at y is equal to 0 what is the electric field again electric field ez is equal to 0 at y is equal to 0 apply this particular boundary condition and i will rewrite that ez at now y is equal to 0 we are applying the second boundary condition so when we apply the second boundary condition i will get the equation as c5 c2 sin ax c3 cos by put y is equal to 0 e raised to minus j beta z this has equated to 0 right this has equated to 0 now on the right hand side if you rewrite this equation then c5 e raised to minus j beta z into c2 sine of ax c3 cos of by is equal to 0 now see in this particular equation again the right hand side is 0 that means on the left hand side out of the three constant terms so again i will denote what are these constant terms so either c5 has to be 0 or c2 has to be 0 or c3 has to be 0 okay so please remember again c5 cannot become 0 the only option is then remaining with us is the left hand side of this equation the c2 or c3 has to be 0 okay now we need to decide which one is going to be 0 we already considered c2 is equal to 0 over the in the above equation so here what it represent is this will give that we need to assume that the other component that c3 has to be 0 over here okay so if you substitute c3 is equal to 0 in this particular equation all the left hand side will become 0 which is again equated to 0 on the right hand side and this equation satisfies on the right hand side so c3 we will assume 0 okay so what we do is we substitute now substitute c1 is equal to 0 and c3 is equal to 0 in equation 12 okay so what we substitute c1 and c3 both equal to 0 in equation 12 and we will rewrite it so what we will get ez is equal to c5 i will get as it is c1 is 0 okay then i will get c2 c3 as it is 0 i will get a c4 okay sine of ax 
sin of b y into e raised to minus j beta z this expression i will get okay so what we do is we will combine all these three constant so here i'll write combining c2 c4 and c5 together and let us call it as a c which is again representing a constant in order to simplify the expression okay so what we can write then so i will write ez is equal to so c5 c4 and c2 i will combine together and i will write this product as a capital c right so then this equation becomes sine of ax into sine of by into e raised to minus j beta z let us call this an equation number 13 now if you see the equation number 13 it is represented as a longitudinal field component on the left hand side this longitudinal field component is expressed in terms of transverse field components on the right hand side so the transverse field components are represented as a x and y and the last term e raised to minus j beta z it represents that the wave is traveling along the positive z direction okay so here we will consider the argument of this particular equation okay so we will apply the last boundary condition now now the two boundary condition we already applied at x is equal to zero okay so over here i will highlight x is equal to zero we applied this boundary condition over here then y is equal to zero we applied this boundary condition now the two more boundary conditions are still remaining that is at x is equal to a and y is equal to b okay so apply these two boundary condition at a time applying boundary conditions applying boundary condition at what at x is equal to a and y is equal to b okay so recall that here we wrote the boundary condition at x is equal to a and y is equal to b ez is going to be zero so again we will apply both of these so what we can write so at x is equal to a and y is equal to b at both of these boundary condition ez is zero okay so here equation 13 can be written as ez is equal to zero on the right hand side you substitute x is equal to a and y is equal to b so i will write this as a capital c sine a now x i represent by small a okay and into sign into bracket capital b and small y i represent by small b okay e raised to minus j beta z call this an equation number 14 now okay so we applied the remaining boundary condition is then okay now in order to satisfy the above equation now kindly carefully see equation number 14 this equation 14 will get satisfied okay so here i will write rewrite c sine a into a into sine b into b e raised to minus j beta z and on the right hand side it is equal to zero so when this equation will get satisfied when we focus on to the argument of the sign what should be the argument of the sign function in this particular equation so that we will get the result is equal to zero so argument then argument in order to satisfy this particular equation the argument of sign function what value they should take so the sine function here we have the two sinusoidal functions sine of a a and sine of b b okay so the result of this equation on the right hand side is zero then what must be the value of arguments into these sine function the argument of sine function should satisfy this condition a a should be integer multiple of y okay and similarly the product b into b the second argument is also integer multiple of pi okay where m 
and n are integers where m and n are integers okay so here what we can write then a is equal to a is equal to m pi by a m pi by a and how we can write capital b capital b is equal to n pi by b okay so let us call this an equation number 15 we substitute the values of capital a and capital b into equation 14 so what we can write then so ez is equal to capital c sine we need to substitute what is a capital a it is a m pi okay m pi x by a right sine n pi y by b you can write in this e raised to minus j beta z okay let us call this an equation number 16 okay so here we have simplified the expression for the longitudinal field component that is e z okay so along with this this is the expression for the e z component in tm wave okay so if you recall back initially we have started so here in the starting we consider that e z is not zero so that means e z has a certain value and this value is given by this particular equation number 16 along with what we assumed here as it is a tm wave hz is zero okay so recall that in the case of a tm wave over here in the case of a tm wave okay ex ey ez hx hy hz ex ey ez and hx hy exist okay so out of six component one component is zero that is hz is zero so here six components ex ey hx hy and ez hz ez and hz these are longitudinal components right out of these longitudinal components ez is non-zero right and hz is zero this is for tm mode right and all these remaining are transverse components okay so ex ey hx and hy okay so we will get ex finally ey hx hy ez as a five components these are as a five components out of which hz is zero out of which hz is zero now you recall the earlier derivation in which a general equation for the transverse component is written now we will be utilizing those equation okay so if you recall that in the previous derivation we have represented ex ey hx and hy we have given the expression for these field components okay so we know that we know now ez and hz is zero already so we now know the value of ez we substitute this value of ez from equation number 16 into the generalized wave equations which are representing ex ey hx and hy okay so recall that how to write these equations for ex ey and hx hy from the general theory of waveguide analysis say so recall again i will revise you how it is represented as it is represented as ex then ey i will write below and then hx over here i will write and hy these four components i am writing from the earlier derivation that is from general theory of waveguide analysis so what is the first step to memorize this equation first of all you write the polarity of the two field components on the both side okay so how it is given for ex term it is minus minus for the ey it is plus minus 
for hx it is plus minus and for hy it is minus minus okay then what is the second step second step is to write down the multiplier okay so the multiplier for ex is first term j omega mu upon h square similarly for ey j omega mu upon h square and for for horizontal the magnetic component it is j omega epsilon upon h square j omega epsilon upon h square this is a multiplier term okay for the first and the second multiplier term is a constant for all that is j beta by h square it is a common j beta by h square this is the second step that we are writing as a second multiplier of the second term of all these equations okay and then finally write down the partial derivative okay so how to write the partial derivative we need to start from x we need to take partial derivative with respect to y now here it is a e field i have to write h field similarly over here the partial derivative will become with respect to x and here it is as z i need to write here as a ez right here i need to write the ez and similarly here you need to copy as it is now uh, the y term over here so the y term what it will become it will become y that means we need to take derivative with respect to x hz will remain as it is and here i need to take derivative with y and ez will remain as it is okay so recall this as a equation a equation b okay so similarly over here for the magnetic field component here the partial derivative i need to take first with y ez right and then here dabba by dabba x now with hz let us call this an equation number c and similarly over here you need to take partial derivative with respect to x ez as it is and here you need to take with respect to y and you need to rewrite hz as it is let us call equation number d so what we know we know five different equations now the four equations which are given with capital a capital b capital c and capital d we have directly taken from the general theory of wave guide analysis so these four equation for ex ey hx and hy are known okay so along with that we also know the equation for ez which is given by equation number 16 and we also know that hz is zero so we know that hz is zero ez is given by equation number 6 so we can substitute ez and hz values ez from equation number 16 and hz is equal to 0 into these equations a b c and d and we will rewrite equations for transverse component okay so first of all i will start writing ex component then so ex component is equal to now you substitute hz is equal to 0 because it is a transverse magnetic mode and hz is equal to 0 so when you substitute hz is equal to 0 over here in the expression this component okay hz this particular value first value will become 0 so similarly in the equation b when i substitute hz is equal to 0 the first component will become 0 which i am showing with red color and similarly in equation number c as hz is equal to 0 this component will become 0 right and similarly when you substitute hz is equal to 0 in equation d this component will become 0 okay so how i can write the equation again so the equation ex can be written as minus j beta upon h square right into dabba by dabba x of ez now ez you need to substitute this value from equation 6 so i will substitute over here the value is c sine into m pi x by a right into sine n pi y by b right e raised to minus j beta z okay you take the derivative with respect to x 
so when you take the derivative with respect to x so what i will get i will get the equation as minus j beta upon h square take the partial derivative i will get m pi by a outside right into c the sign will become now cos m pi x by a right into sin n pi y by b as it is into e raised to minus j beta z okay so this equation let us call this equation as equation number 17 okay now similarly you can write ey component so how the ey component is given ey is given by minus j beta upon h square deba by deba y of e z now e z you substitute again c sin m pi x by a into sin n pi y by b right e raised to minus j beta z right and when you simplify this what you will get the term minus j beta upon h square right n pi y by b i will take it as a out as a constant term into c sin m pi x by a as it is right and here i will get cos n pi y by b into e s2 minus j beta z equation number 18 now similarly you substitute e z and h z value in equation number c over here to find out the value of h x so what you will get the value of h x directly i will write h x you will get equal to j omega epsilon upon h square right n pi y b okay n pi by b c sin m pi x by a okay cos n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z let us call this an equation number 19 and finally i will write the equation for h y so directly h y what value you will get minus j omega epsilon upon h square right m pi upon a right c cos m pi x upon a directly i will write into sin n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z this is equation number 20 okay so here we have converted these transverse field components ex ey hx and hy in terms of longitudinal field components okay so here we got total five different sets of equation the first equation that is ex this one right so the second equation of transverse ey okay and hx with this equation and hy with this particular equation okay and already we know what is the value of ez ez is this particular equation right and anyway for the tm mode hz is zero so all the six component the expressions are known to us ez and hz ex ey and hx and hy okay so whatever equations we have got which are represented 17 18 19 and 20 these are known as transverse field component for the tm board and equation 16 represent ez component for the transverse magnetic mode okay so the derivation over here is the indicative way of representing the possible modes of a propagation now here the uh, integers m and n okay so when you observe all these equation ex ey hx and hy what we will find is m and n okay so this m and n are called as integers 
okay and these integer can take any value from 0 to any particular real number any particular real number okay and these real number are known as possible modes of the fields okay so when you substitute any real number representing this m and n starting from 0 to any particular real value these are indicating modes of transverse magnetic propagation in the rectangular waveguide okay so we will come to that particular point and we will see what dominating supporting mode is supported in the rectangular waveguide okay so for the time being you just remember that the m and n are the indicative of mode numbers okay and these mode numbers are showing the possible propagating modes of a transverse magnetic type okay so i hope that you understood this derivation of finding the field components in transverse magnetic mode of the rectangular waveguide now please again remember that the rectangular waveguide will not support tem mode it will only support te and tm mode out of which we have derived the equation for tm mode expression for the field components okay now please remember you need not to derive the transverse electric mode again with the same technique okay so there is another technique to remember the transverse electric field components okay so just right now we have derived in detail and we saw the field expressions for transverse magnetic mode okay so on the similar basis we can write down direct equation for the field component in transverse electric mode okay so that we will again see over here transverse electric mode now please remember for finding the field expression for transverse electric mode i am not going to derive the equations again but i will show you a technique once you know the field components for the transverse magnetic mode on the similar basis you can write down the equation for transverse electric mode also okay so briefly i will describe how to go ahead with that now i will explain what is a te mode now te mode i will write over here so te stands for transverse electric mode transverse electric mode okay so in transverse electric mode what is the fundamental the electric field is zero right while the magnetic field is not zero if you recall from the earlier discussion in the beginning of this particular lecture okay so what we said now we are considering this particular mode te mode so in te mode ez is zero and hz is not zero so that means the equation for ez is already zero but the equation for hz is not zero okay so ez is zero and hz is not zero so by deriving on the similar basis first we need to find equation for hz okay once you found the equation for hz ez is already zero you substitute these values in the general theory equation of the waveguide components and then find out all the remaining transverse component okay so here similar to the way we found out the expression of ez by equation number 16 on the similar basis we can write equation for the non-zero component in te mode that is the hz okay so in tm mode we found out the equation for ez which is given by equation number 16 on the similar basis we can write down equation for hz in te mode now okay so we recall that i will write here we recall from tm mode analysis i will write here for understanding purpose tm mode analysis we found out equation for ez and what that equation that equation was given by equation number 16 so i will rewrite this c sine okay what is that value m pi x by a c sine m pi x by a okay into sine n pi y by b sine n pi 
y by b and the propagating parameter e raised to minus j beta z so this this was the equation we have found during the tm mode analysis okay which was non zero component now in the analysis of te mode we know that ez is zero but az is not zero okay so here we need to write we will write equation for edge head on the similar basis i'll write on the similar basis okay so i will not again derive the expression for edge head because i know the equation for ez in the case of tm mode analysis on the similar basis i can directly write down the equation for hz in te mode analysis now okay so in te mode analysis what i will do is the hz component how it is written it is written on the similar basis of this particular equation of ez the constant c i will replace with constant d now okay so the sign term i will replace with a cos term only this is the change cos m pi x by a okay into the second term also the sign i will replace with a cos cos n pi y by b okay and e raised to minus j beta z term as it is constant so here is the expression for h z component so if you notice this particular equation of e z over here and if you notice h z equation over here they look similar only the constant term from c i will change to d and the sign term in ez expression is now changed to cosine term in the hz term okay so when you perform the similar analysis if you apply the boundary condition and once again you will come to this particular equation only the constant c is replaced with another constant represented as a d okay so here we are not needed to again derive applying boundary condition the equation for hz on the direct similar basis the way in which we derived the equation ez we can find out the expression for hz okay so we now hz we know the value okay so we know that hz with this particular so call this an equation number 1 we also know that ez is zero okay in the case of te mode let us call this an equation number 2 okay rewrite the general field equation from the general theory of wave guide analysis and substitute these equations 1 and 2 in those equations and rewrite the field equations so again i will do the same job ex component okay ey component ex ey then i will write over here hx and hy this i am writing again from the general theory of wave guide analysis minus minus plus minus writing the polarity plus minus and minus minus okay so what is the first term over here now the second step that we know is to write down the multiplier term the multiplier term is for electric field j omega mu upon h square j omega mu upon h square and for elect uh, magnetic field it is j omega epsilon upon h square j omega epsilon upon h square and the second multiplier term is a constant for all these four terms that is j beta by h square j beta by h square right j beta by h square and the fourth term second multiplier j beta upon h square okay and then finally you need to write down the partial derivatives okay so the partial derivative here you need to start with x that means with y hz and here with x ez right similarly here y means you need to take partial derivative with x hz same here with respect to y and ez similarly you need to start here with y ez and here you need to take partial with x and hz 
similarly here you need to start with x as a partial derivative ez as it is and here dabba by dabba y z as it is so what we know that we know equation number one and equation number two where hz value is known and ez value is known you substitute equation number one replace the hz value in this equation and place ez is equal to zero and find out the simplified expression so when i substitute ez is equal to zero in this equation okay so this part will become zero directly and this part will become zero directly the way in which here we cancelled out okay so similarly ez term this part will become zero and this part will become zero okay so i will write the expression for ex then so ex is given by minus j omega mu upon h square multiplied by dabba by dabba y of hz now hz i will replace from equation number one it is given by d cos m pi x by a into n pi y by b right e raised to minus j beta z now what you do is now you take the partial derivative inside the bracket and simplify the equation for ex component okay so when you substitute what you can write then you need to take partial derivative with respect to uh, here i forgot to write okay so here the value is cos m pi x by a into cos n pi y by b okay in this way e raised to minus j beta z now take the partial derivative with respect to y for the bracket term so what constant term when you take the partial derivative you will get sine of n pi y by b into n pi y by b okay so here minus minus will become plus j omega mu upon h square into d n pi y by b okay i will take this as a outside okay and what i will get cos m pi x by a as it remains same and here the cos term will become a sine sine n pi y by b right e raised to minus j beta z okay let us call this an equation number three okay so we have found out successfully the equation for ex component for te mode now similarly you take ey component so the ey component is j omega mu upon h square okay into dabba by dabba x again you substitute this d cos m pi x by a into cos n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z okay so if you take the partial derivative the ey term that you will get is minus j omega mu upon h square when you take the derivative d m pi by a right into now the cos will become sine m pi x by a and this term will remain as it is original cos n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z equation number four right and similarly you can write down the equation for hx so directly i will write hx is equal to now you substitute minus j beta upon h square dabba by dabba x of hz now hz you substitute d cos m pi x by a right into cos n pi y upon b e raised to minus j beta z okay so here when you simplify when you take the partial derivative with respect to x what you will get the equation you will get j beta upon h square right m pi by a it will become sine right into d sine m pi x by a 
into cos n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z as it is equation number 5 and finally when you substitute the value of hz into the expression of hy what you will get hy is equal to minus jb right upon h square now dabba by dabba y of hx so the hx you substitute this value again d cos m pi x by a into cos n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z okay you simplify take the partial derivative what term you will get is directly j beta upon h square right into n pi by b multiplied by d now this will become remain as cos m pi x by a as it is now this term will get converted into sine n pi y by b right e raised to minus j beta z this is equation number six so here equation number three four five and six they are representing transverse field component in the case of transverse electric mode with ez is equal to zero and hz given by equation number one so here equation number one and two are the condition for the transverse electric mode analysis of the rectangular waveguide and when we substitute these expression of hz and ez into the general equations of the waveguide analysis we will get equation 3 representing as a ex ey we will get with equation number 4 and hx with equation number 5 and finally hy we got with equation number 6 okay so here we saw the complete derivation of tm mode analysis of the rectangular waveguide again please remember over here that if you observe equation 1 2 3 4 5 6 these equations are represented in the form of uh, real integer numbers m and n and m and n these are going to decide the possible available modes that will be propagating through the given rectangular waveguide in transverse electric mode okay so the more about what are the dominant mode and how to reduce this field expression into different types of modes of propagation we will see later on okay so here we saw in detail the expression for field equation in te mode as well as in tm mode only the thing you need to remember that you need to remember the generalized field equation given by the general theory of a waveguide analysis and in summary i will represent in this way so how you can summarize the whole derivation it is not at all required to derive this whole derivation for te mode and tm mode so here in a summary i will tell you a shortcut method to have and to write down the field expression for this field component as on when the different types of modes are asked in the examination okay so in summary i will write over here how to remember these derivations and equations so in summary i will write now say what is the summary we know that tem is not possible in rectangular waveguide in rectangular waveguide okay and the reason also we have saw okay so what was the reason because of that central conductor phenomena because rectangular waveguide is a single conductor it will not support the pure tem mode of a propagation so the only possible way that the rectangular waveguide is going to support is te mode and tm mode right so in te mode we call it as a transverse electric mode we call it as a transverse electric mode and similarly tm we call it as a transverse magnetic mode okay so in transverse electric mode 
the condition is the electric field component along the direction of propagation now we consider z as a propagation direction before z is a propagation direction we consider so for te mode transverse electric field component is zero while transverse magnetic field component is non zero right and similarly for tm mode we have magnetic field component along the direction of propagation is zero but the electric field component is non zero okay so here the transverse field components are ex ey hx and hy along with ez and sz as a longitudinal component okay so out of which ez is zero and hz is non zero right and similarly what we can write for tm mode for tm mode the transverse field component are given as ex ey hx and hy okay while hz component is zero right and ez component is not zero okay so here we know that ex ey hx hy are the common transverse component for both of these modes okay so here in order to find out expression for all these transverse component in te mode and in tm mode we need to know what is the value of hz in the case of t mode and what is the value of ez in the case of tm mode so in the case of tm mode analysis in tm mode with a derivation we know that ez is given by c sin m pi x by a right it is very easy to recall both are sine terms sin n pi y by b into e raised to minus j beta z so this we know along with along with this is this is for tm mode for tm mode ez is given by this and what is the value of hz hz is zero okay so how you can write the equation for ex ey hx hy now from general theory what you do is from the general theory of waveguide analysis right from the general theory of waveguide analysis write expression for so we write expression for all transverse component all transverse components so what are these transverse components ex ey and hx hy so you write down ex ey hx hy field expressions from that general theory of waveguide analysis i told you how to remember to write the equation for these transverse component from the general theory of waveguide analysis then what you do is in these equations substitute ez which is given with this particular equation okay so this is the value of ez and put hz is equal to 0 and then you will get all the component ex ey and hx hy as mentioned over here okay so in the case of a tm mode again sorry in the te mode so what we know in the case of a te mode for the rectangular waveguide we know hz is non zero and how the hz is given hz is given as a d you need to replace sine term with the cos terms cos m pi x by a into cos n pi y by b e raised to e raised to minus j beta z this we know and we know ez is equal to zero in the case of t mode so what you need to do again from the general theory of a waveguide analysis write down the expression for all the transverse component write down the equation for ex ey hx and hy and then substitute
ez is equal to 0 and hz given by this particular equation and find out the field component equations for the transfers okay so this is a shortcut technique in order to derive and find out the field expression values for the transverse component in te mode and in tm mode okay so i hope uh, you understood this long way derivation and a shortcut technique how to derive the field equation for all these different components right so here i will declare that the transverse electric mode analysis and the transverse magnetic mode analysis for the rectangular waveguide is over okay so next time what we will see we will see a detail about what different types of te and tm modes are being supported by the rectangular waveguide and we will see the definition of dominant mode in the rectangular waveguide and please remember that whatever the suffixes or the integers we have made use over here that is m and n these are very responsible for deciding a particular propagation of a wave dominating mode okay so in the next lecture we will go into the details of dominant mode propagation of the rectangular waveguide and there afterwards we will start another type of a waveguide on the similar way by using a shortcut technique we will derive the field equation values for the circular waveguide again as it is a single conductor we will be dealing with only t mode and tm mode for the circular waveguide also so i hope uh, you understood the modal analysis of field components in the rectangular waveguide for the both modes te and tm okay so thank you very much i will stop over here